Mm. My Lord Mo may only have one day left on the stock exchange, but I somehow think it will keep trading after that. Hi again everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. So Friday was an abysmal day for Marlon Automotive. It followed on from the poor optics that the company suffered um, from the uh, Fox interview with Dave Mitchell where they had the, the audio problems. Um, so the stock obviously dropped by 12.25% to finish the Friday session off at uh, 46 cents a share. Now given that it's a long weekend in the US, uh, means trading resumes on Tuesday the 5th of September and that was the deadline that uh, Marlon had to, I guess, be above the $1 mark uh, for 10 consecutive trading days uh, to regain NASDAQ compliance. I don't think it's going to get to a dollar to, to start with and, you know, so, and it's definitely not going to be up there for 10 days. So, you know, in many ways, Tuesday's kind of like, theoretically, like the day we're going to get a delisting notice after that. But, you know, like we've kind of said here before, um, there is like a whole appeals process. So the chances are that we won't see the end of Marlon as a listed company um, going uh, forward, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with um, the, the stock uh, on Tuesday and beyond. Uh, I guess we have to wait, wait and hear what um, comes out from both the NASDAQ and from Marlon Automotive. I guess we have to wait till the NASDAQ issues a delisting uh, warning when that comes. It might come that day, it might come a few days later. We're not really sure. I don't know how automated this stuff is. Sometimes it does, it's not as automated, but um, we'll soon see. Uh, now, following on from the interview, Marlon Automotive did uh, put out a uh, press release saying that they are answering some of the questions uh, that got cut off in the interview, uh, which was probably a good move from the company, you know, because that kind of did leave some poor optics. Uh, and it was released early in the session. Um, however, it didn't really do much to help the stock. The stock still managed to fall. Um, and if you look at the press release, there's a couple of questions which were raised at the end, which just weren't commented on. They did talk about the general administrative costs, which, you know, they kind of itemize and, you know, you can do your own um, interpretations of whether or not it was still a, a gross overspend or if Mullen were actually doing it within budgets or whatever, you know, you can make your own decisions on that. Um, but a couple of questions which were kind of pricked at but not responded to weren't included in the press release. Um, obviously there was comments about uh, all the stock splits and how it's just like getting, seeing the stock getting rubbish and there was no real space for comment on that, which would have been good because that was the whole point of that interview was to talk about like the legal action that Marlon Automotive is taking against uh, short selling, uh, but that wasn't able to be um, addressed. Now, the other thing that wasn't addressed um, and was teased at in the interview was that uh, they commented on that was is David Mitchery and the board being paid too much? And that's one thing that's really, you know, obviously a sore point for a lot of investors because, uh, you know, the company's stock price has suffered, but, you know, they're still receiving quite high compensation in the eyes of many of their investors. Um, and so it would be nice to see if they would come out and sort of justify that. Uh, but, you know, perhaps another day. Anyway, so it is a long weekend um, and we've basically got couple of days to ruin see what's going to happen with my old when trade resumes next week uh like i said i'm still looking to actually uh buy a third um tranche of uh stocks in in my automotive i've bought two i've got an average price of about 80 cents per share so i'm almost down 50 cents now so uh that's, that's sore but my thoughts was that if i'm going to put like that last little bit of money in, i'm going to actually wait till after september 6th and just see what happens with the delisting uh process um, I'm not expecting a delisting, but uh, just in case, you know, I may as well hold off that money. Like I've said the whole time, I'm not investing big money in Mullen or Mobile. I've always sort of seen it as a very speculative play, but at the moment, I still see it as actually quite undervalued. Like its uh, book value is actually much higher than uh, what it's trading at. I guess there's obviously the risk factors of um, being delisted and the fact that it's been targeted by um, short sellers so heavily in the past, which is like dragging the price down, in my opinion, of course never investing advice. Anyway, um, let me know your thoughts on what you see Mullen Automotive going uh, on Tuesday and beyond. And when do you think we will see this delisting notice? Um, and, you know, do you see Mullen actually surviving whatever actions they take to stay on the NASDAQ? Share it all in the comments below. I hope you're all having a great long weekend if you're in America. Um, until next time, everyone, man, Marcus, trade in your favour. Cheers.